I mean, our microphones are on, so be careful. I just want the audience to know here before it is that we get started mm. that we've got Stugas here, yeah. me here, yep. sickness just uh, boiling the building. It's, it's a cauldron of sneezing, coughing, and Who's virus. Sne- there was someone sneezing in the other room. I have no idea who it was. They were sneezing, blowing their nose. I screamed at them, go home. Yes, a yeah. plague of illness has run through the room, and um, Amin is here. I am slightly concerned over the last couple of years as it relates to Stugat and a habit that he has picked up, Hmm. another habit that he has picked up so that he can have action next to the action of daily scam action that he has (laughs) every day. Thank you. He has developed, I believe, an addiction to these lotteries. He has got so many mega million tickets. Yep. He, he's got so I don't understand why you're buying so many of them. I don't ever hear about you winning. I have mega tickets. I have Powerball tickets. I drive around town to town. I'm not feeling good now. I uh, we I drive around town to town, Dan. Here's the key to playing Powerball and playing Mega Millions. And I have Powerball tickets in my bag right now, but I have no idea if I won last night. We'll check uh, during the show. Ooh. Jeez. But what I do is I drive around. I drive around the Midwest. I'm on a gummy. I'm in the passenger seat. I drive around the South. I'm on a gummy. I'm in a passenger seat. I drive around South Florida. I'm on a gummy. I'm in a passenger wait, seat. Wait, wait, we got it. And I try to scout out good locations where a winning lottery ticket would be sold. I like this. <laughs> Thank you. I like this idea yes. because you don't buy winning lottery tickets at random places. If you, there's a, there is a, a theme or a trend. It's never like, oh, I got it from Safeway. No one ever gets a winning t- lottery ticket from, like, a chain supermarket. Right. S- Stu, what are you running from? What do you why, mean? Why are you trying to get out? Why are you trying to get away? Why are you trying to play the lottery so much? To Like, what are you trying to get out of? <laughs> they are. What are you They're trying not, to the escape winning right ticket, now? ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's over a billion dollars right now. 1.2. It's the ultimate end game. Uh, I'm with Stu. I love just the idea. Like, let me hit it one time. Uh, uh, I'll still come to work, but let me just have the no, money. No, you won't. Is I will. There, <laughs> is there a more done topic in all of radio and podcasting than... If you win the lottery, what are you going to do? I feel like that is the number one conversation in the history of mankind. Well, what would you do? We've we've done it at least like six times just in the last year. And it's always fun. It's always, it never gets old. It never gets tired. It never gets boring. But my fear is I'm going to have a winning ticket and be the one that loses the winning ticket because I have no idea where my tickets are. I mean, (laughs) they're everywhere. You need to do what my dad does. I have them in my car right now. Just stash them in the car. That's what my dad does. There's (laughs) just a million of them from over a year. I don't even know if he checks the numbers. I think he just likes to fill out the scan chart. You guys have friends that will be like, oh, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your money with this. One of my friends the other day was like, put that $10 in an IRA. And my my other friend's retort retort was, that's not going to get me a billion dollars in 40 years. Is the other friend Priya? Yes. She's my my Powerball ticket. We have a Powerball pact. I've said it before on the show. She does all the Powerball Mega Millions purchasing. I will just get a cut. I don't do anything. But you just kick in. Pretty, no. What, oh. You don't even kick in? Uh, if she asked me to, I would, but she's never asked. Oh, what a deal for you. Yeah. yeah. 
We got to talk to Priya about that. The final number last night was 15. And on my first sheet, I have a 15 as my oh. final number. Oh. <laughs> I'm with Stugatz, though. Oh so close. <laughs> Just buy five away. <laughs> I'm with Stugatz, though. You want to assess the gas station. Yeah. The way you do at a flight, you have to. is this the one that goes down? You're assessing the people around? It's the what? same thing. No, that, 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 you know how I is know. This the I, Boeing? You know how I assess it? I look in the mirror. I'm like, it's I'm not on. going down. Yeah. We're good. I always look around. I'm like, that That person's not dying today. We're yeah. good. Is Tony the backup That's pilot? <laughs> We're saying we're, we're flying. <laughs> Trust me. We are landing that thing. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening with the the delusion that you will win this, that you know what a winning gas station looks it like? It has a look, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Look. You know when you see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, but right. I, I, I'd like for you to explain to me. Uh, you guys are all nodding when he mm-hmm. says, yes, I I, kn- I look at a place and I know whether that looks like a place that would give away a billion dollars. And I don't understand what the what any of you are talking about. Allow me to explain, Dan. When I go out to get lottery tickets, my wife says, why don't you just go to the Publix right down the no. street in Parkland? That's no, no, rookie no, no, move. You want to know Ridiculous. why I don't go there, Dan? Because that place is never going to generate the winning ticket. I go to Tamarack. That's where mm-hmm. I go. I mean, I just drive around University Drive until I find something. I'll give you two other places where I guarantee you will never get a winning ticket. Those automated machines, Games. right? Like a vending machine? No. And then they've done this now. They've launched an app where you can play on your phone. I'm like, absolutely not. The winning ticket comes from a filled-out Scantron handed to a gas station clerk who's got right. grubby hands. Like, mm-hmm. their hands are all gray from yes. all the dust and yes. stuff. And then you also have to get, like, you know, something like a pack of cigarettes from behind them. That's where the winning ticket comes from. It has to be a place where if you could picture it in a news story about where the winning ticket was purchased, (laughs) you'd be like, wow, that seems like the the BP and Tamarack. Ah, ah, that seems like a place where they'd sell a winning ticket. You read it and it sounds legit. Somewhere where the shifts are very defined because when you, they sell the winning ticket, they're going to go there and interview the guy that sold it. And he's like, yeah, like we, customers came in and I, I can't believe that's happened at my store. Because I think they get a bonus, don't they? I want to say that the place that sells the winning ticket gets a bonus. What from, kind of bonus? Like just the, you want to say, you just said it. Just you a little, said it. A little like, thank there's you. There's a bonus? There's I a, think so. There's a tip. Instead I want to say you're to, right. Instead of going to education. I think there is a bonus, Dan. Instead of going to education, mm-hmm. we're just going to give that lucky little gas station yeah. over on Levine, we're going to give them, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to break them off a little percentage that could go to the kids. <laughs> Something off the top. I, you're you're yeah. right. I'm yep. seeing bonus commissions yep. for selling jackpot winning tickets. Yes. Like if you sell. Five thousand dollars for selling a two million dollar winning ticket, and a thousand for selling one million dollar winning ticket. And then it goes. The right. vending machines. You're right. You're never gonna get like a million dollars out of one. But I've won a lot of money in scratch offs from the vending machines. Scratch-offs What's and a lot of it's money? A diff- mm. it's scratch offs. Find a lot of money. More than a hundred dollars. Scratch offs. Really? More than enough to pay like for my scratch off yeah. habit. To, to Amin's point, though, I don't trust anything electronic. That's the thing. It can it can give me something fake. Electronic roulette, please. No. Electronic blackjack, I know Hell you're cheating. No. Yeah. Everything is cheating if it's electronic. Because they can program it. They've actually exactly. done this in Vegas where they were the uh the big thing happened with the slot machines were all like programmed to make you it's lose. Programmed to not win. Yeah, to not win. I no. agree. There's a couple of things I do when I get my lottery tickets. I tell the person, I'm going to retire you if we win. Now, I'm not going to do it. I hope it's not binding. I hope there's no video. That's why you have to go to, like, a cheap gas station because they don't have video, okay? But I always tell the person, hey, I win, you win, all right? You can buy this gas station. That's one thing I do. The other thing I do, I never fill out a sheet without the number 23, MJ. Mm -hmm. Stugatz, please. You don't just, click just real quick. I, I, I think I won. I, I will get to your superstitions and whatnot in a moment. But I don't know whether I, I've been off and everyone here is sick. And I don't actually know if Chris Cody was just doing an impersonation in my ear or whether I just heard delivered to all the appearance I had not discovered yet of a third Zagaki roaming around here. <laughs> Uh, with his politics showing, and this third Zagaki is not as good as the first two Zagakis. It, but I appreciate. Are you telling me that while I was gone, while I was gone, a third Zagaki was born? And I think I heard. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Jeremy trying to partake in a fourth Zagaki, and I am here for a future where I am surrounded by a chorus of clucking Zagakis. You know what it means when you have four Zagakis, Dan. I you don't, don't have one. I, I mean. don't. <laughs> 
Were here there when you, here did, when you need me. Did I just hear? Oh! That was Fleming. My voice never cracks. <laughs> it's like it's the be Constitution. A rough <laughs> All right. Well, since uh, since we're moving into a serious place, I saw Ralph Nader get involved where he says sports betting is going to change all of professional and college sports. And you should know, like, we're right in the middle of all of these sports leagues are terrified of the gambling problems that approach as gambling floats the media industry and gambling pays for everything in sports. And we're going to now start moralizing about, oh, I'm a little scared now if I'm Adam Silver, even though I've gotten into bed, as all of these leagues have, with everybody that's involved with gambling to help normalize it. And these leagues should be terrified of everything that's happening. America has a gambling problem, but it's lotto. <laughs> but it's but it's mega but it's mega millions. It's not a problem. I feel like it, most people are gambling responsibly. Well, yeah. I don't know what Stugatz is doing because and and I want Tony, I want you to elaborate on what your question to Stugatz is because you've got him up to something. I've got him always and, up to something. And to Dan. me, it's just a get rich a get rich quick scheme. The most the most cliched of them. Like he he wants to spend a few hundred bucks here in the hopes that he could be a. Billionaire. It feels to me like the moment that a billion, uh, one point two billion dollar ticket cashes in Stugatz's hands from the BP in Tamarack, will be the last day that we ever see Stugatz ever again. I don't know. Ever? No. I, I mean, here, yes. Here, but, but I here. think we'll see him on TV. I have the idea that Stugatz, <laughs> because Dan says this all the time, Stugatz cannot stay away from a microphone. So. The first month, sure, he's going to travel the world with his wife and kids. They're going to have fun. They're going to go on these exotic vacations. He's, he's doing gonna, that regardless. He's going to play golf and some of the – yeah, that's true. Good point. <laughs> yeah, so what he does now. <laughs> but at some point, at some point, he's so going to get you. antsy, and he's going to be want to be on with, like, Mikey C and, and – uh, <laughs> Uh, Mikey uh, and Mikey A. Mikey C and Mikey G. Dan Jake and Mikey A yeah. and Mikey T. The yeah. other Mikey G. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Bubba Watson and uh, yep. Java Chamberlain, all yep. those guys. My Gr guys. The, the other Gronk. Yep. They're all going to get together. <laughs> the other Gronk. <laughs> Not Chris, Gord. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they're all Gronks to uh, me. I know. There's the one that plays and then the other Gronks. The wrong so. Gronk? Is that what you're saying? You're not even saying it's the other Gronk. Not Gronk. You're saying it's the, no, but you're not saying it's not Gronk. You're saying... <laughs> It's even second and third degree Gronk, Gronk adjacent? No, I'm saying that anyone who's not the Gronk that plays is just the other Gronk. They're there's all the same. Rob, then there's Chris. Rob. I think it goes in this order. That's and then Gordy Gronkowski. So, so there's, there's We love Gordy. This is what I, I just mean. heard from you. There's Gronk, <laughs> and then there's the other Gronk and the other so, Gronk. So okay, yeah. so the, all right. So they uh, <laughs> so this is the third Gronk is what you were saying. They all they all work hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm sure I mean they they're do. all the same. One just happens to be one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Yeah. Yes. Right. Birthing an economy, an economy of Gronks, <laughs> famous Gronks to roam the land. Uh, I, I saw in the in the Athletic, I think it was David Aldridge uh, writing for the Athletic. DA. So, uh, he was writing about how players are saying that fans who are gambling are even more dehumanizing than they were before. Shocker. Yeah. That the, the, Now you're losing me money, and the, the way that the players are being heckled is because it, it, the arena is more aggressive this way when, like, oh, my God, now that we're going to make it this clearly sort of the gladiator. I've got money rolling on this, and this is sort of – I'm I'm gonna watch the spectacle here. You just cost me money because you because you made one three instead of two, and I had you at one and a half over threes for the game. And now I'm yelling all sorts of dehumanizing insults at you. This is a a problem that has been in the shadows for a while, but now it's all out in the open. And I ask you, how different is it? I think it's from, not that from different. Stugatz's present addiction to these <laughs> dumb tickets. Whoa, whoa! whoa. I think because of fantasy, oh. this has kind of been going on for a while. People have been getting mad at running backs for oh. not getting me enough fantasy points for probably over a decade. Now. People were mad at Demar Hamlin for dying on the field because they reset fantasy football scores because that game didn't finish. A lot of leagues talk about had dehumanizing, confusing. like fantasy football. Come on, like that. Well, but that's this been is where. But hold years. on, Jeremy. But this is where this started, right? This is where some of this started. That was always a joke a while ago when fantasy just started. There, there was a joke you'd say to a player. You see Joe Mixon in the street, and you say, "Oh, you cost me. I needed that touchdown." And it was a joke. But now, more and more, when there's money involved, you're entitled to it. You're entitled to. I can say whatever you want. To this guy, he just cost me money. Well, fantasy is different. There's not an instant payout. So does it impact your season? Perhaps. But you don't get paid out until weeks later, until after the season's over. This is instantaneous. This is your money on the line as the game is being played. And it's happening at all different times. 
Like, you have that bet, first team to score 10 points. Like, you have fans yelling at all different times and all different players at every single game. This is in the same vein as the people at Inter Miami. Fans are because all the prices are crazy and Messi isn't playing a lot, so people want to know ahead of time is he playing? This is the same kind of conversation of entitlement. To me, if I'm gambling on a sport, I'm taking like I'm put I know the risk. If a guy doesn't play well, that's just part of it. Like same thing if I buy a ticket to Inter Miami, if Messi's out that game, that's just part of this. Like, no, I don't think there's that, any, that's, that's, I we're too entitled. Like, yeah. I agree with everything Dan's saying. People are upset about all these things, but it's just entitlement. I'll tell you what. I had a player tell me that the thing about this that is different from when people were just like, oh, my God, you blew the game or whatever, is, like, we're winning. And I had a great game, but, like, your line was something. So I had a player that out of spite, like, guys yelling at him, was like, yeah, I need you to hit two more threes. To hit my over, the guy's like, I will purposely just stop shooting threes. <laughs> like, if we're winning and, like, in the pool. I love that. And I'm doing well. It's like, on the fan. Don't open your yeah. mouth. I mean, okay, but yeah. you guys are you guys are talking about entitled here, and what I will tell you is the more you dehumanize the athlete, less and less and less and less and less and less and less human, the more you are entitled. Because any of us talking right now would say, I'm not entitled to someone else's humanity. But here, you <laughs> put money on it. You put money on it, <laughs> and and now the, the 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 conversation gets coarse. But I really do want to compare. Look, man, I was stunned that we were in Las Vegas in the Super Bowl, a conservative entity, the NFL, a Wait, conservative entity. Hold on, it, you were stunned? Yes, I'm I'm stunned that in ten years, did we've... someone say conservative entity? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! No! What? Oh, th- see, this is why. <laughs> Wait, Hers five? was better than mine. <laughs> in the fifth Zagaki. Yours was How is the fifth Zagaki better than the third and the fourth Zagaki already? How is that possible? New Zagaki rankings. Top five. <laughs> Learning at the knee. I mean, Tony's is. I think Tony's is the best of the Mine's Zagakis. Mine's the best, man. You don't have to worry I, about it. I, wow. I do. Mike's I think it's better. Be upset, than, I think yeah. it's better than Mike's. CT five Zagakis. <laughs> Number five, Chris. <laughs> I, I want to get back to Stugatz, okay, though, and him. Uh, you believe how would his life change? Because Stugatz wouldn't be in a place where he was not allowed to give his sports opinion to people when he wished. So you've got him off on some island, and I understand why you think he'd be golfing all day, but he'll, he's going to have opinions on a Monday after football, and he's going to want a place to put them. So I don't think it's just retiring to some island somewhere. I have I figured it out. Stugatz, what he'll do is he'll parlay the amazing story of him winning the lottery to become, like, the biggest guest on the whole sports circuit. So instead of having his <laughs> a own billionaire show, who doesn't need sports. <laughs> exactly. So So – He'll go on Rich Eisen. He'll go on. He'll infiltrate Dan Eisen Patrick. Won't have me. No, they will when you win the lottery. Right. When you're a billionaire, Buy they my absolutely way on. will. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, can will. I ask you guys a question? I didn't just realize. I just realized this uh, because when Stugat said Eisen won't have me on, uh, I think Samson's filling in for Eisen. We were just back here when you said eyes, and we're like, can you believe Samson's what? doing eyes? And I'm really, a little, I'm really, a little, I think he's cheating on us. Huh. I don't like this. Tony Show alum. Wow. Uh, I've just learned of this. How do we feel? Uh, Samson's Samson wants some stardom. He's doing shows. He's doing a tour. And now he's filling in for Rich Eisen. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know that that. I mean, that's a big seat. That's not a small seat. It's a small person sitting in the seat. Yeah. Do we do the thing where what Matt Ishbia did? Like, if you go over there, you can't come back over here. Isn't he competing against us right yeah, now? Like Isn't that's... David Sampson right now an employee for Meadowlark? Yep. Is he not just right now competing against us? I mean, what's his contract look like? I'm sure he'll find a way yeah. to wiggle out of it. I bet whatever he's doing on Rich Eisen's show, I bet he doesn't have this. You got to go pee pee. Yeah, Go Go <laughs> Good job, Yeti. Mm. You think he's got that, Streeter? What is that show? What time is that show? Is that at noon? Is that going up against us as we release our podcasts? David Sampson is going to be competing against our show. It is noon to three p.m. Eastern. It's on Roku. It's on Odyssey. Wait, Sirius wait, wait, wait. Why, you, why are you sending people there? No, just, we don't know. Dan what, asked a question. We I'm don't know what an channel it's on. No, don't answer the question. Don't you know how to play this game? Dan asked. You say I don't know. 
I only so, watch the DraftKings network. Exactly. Mm. Who's Rich Eisen? There you go. Even better. Uh, well, I think that he and Stugatz don't get along. I heard jealousy in Stugatz right there. I think what Samson's doing today, you're jealous of. No, I'm just imagining if I did it and the reaction that I would get. You know? It reminds me of the <laughs> April Fool's tweet that I saw that said uh, Stugatz was getting a job with WFAN that a few people sent me, and I was like, guys, come on. Hmm. Stugatz would actually have to go to this job it, if, by he, the way, <laughs> if he took it. Number one. Number two, it was the laziest. Like, it like was. they didn't, they didn't bother to write like some expositional story. It was just a picture of Stugatz. It's, it's what it would turn into. You put anything... A picture of person in action, a little logo, and a quote in that specific font with quotes around it. People take that as fact. I cannot count the number of times my friends have been fooled by the internet just because it came in a clever infographic. <laughs> Infographics. You want to talk about what's destroying America? It's not sports gambling. It's not gambling. It's infographics. Those things are the worst, the absolute worst, and people keep falling for them, and I'm sick and tired of it. Like, they don't even, like, attempt to say, wait a second, where was this reported? Let me look at the fine print, hat tip to such and such. Let me go Google that article, that podcast. Nope, nope, I'm just going to take its word for it because of the font. The infographic has such validity in social currency that if you see quotes, you're like, oh, I'm locked in. I got to read it. They must be true. That's how ball sack sports Blew up, right? Like, we interviewed him on Basketball Illuminati. Shout out to that great podcast that once existed, right? Um, <laughs> we interviewed the guy, and he was like, because so, his quotes were going viral. He's right, what, He's what right. Was what, 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 what was that? Stating facts. What, I mean, what was, it was that? a great podcast that once existed. Your third eye open. There's a lot of those around here. You know? There used to be. It's like, it's like uh, ancient civilizations. Remember the ancient Egyptians? Look at the pyramids. Oh, my God. Look Thank at that. you. Look, look at that episode of Basketball Illuminati. Oh, my God. Their stupidity. There it is. <laughs> Just flying around there. You go, people, tourists go. You know, they got the Parthenon, <laughs> you got the Colosseum in Rome, and, and then you got the broken uh, tip pyramid of basketball Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> then you got off the looking glass over here. <laughs> you were saying. But yeah, the guy was telling us, he's like, he Who noticed. Who would have seen this popularity in women's sports coming? Dog. <laughs> Dog. Yo, the number of like A, huge women's sports stories, and B, conspiracies oh. in basketball that have happened since both of those shows went off the air. It's like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe have a little patience. Maybe that's the that's the lesson. <laughs> is it? Is that the lesson? That's because the, it seemed like you were headed somewhere else before you started talking about basketball Illuminati, a podcast that once existed. Yep, a great, great civilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, like Atlantis, the lost city of Atlantis. We may have found it, by the way. But you were saying before that. Yes. What? We may have found it. We're finding oceans under oceans now, Dan. Wait, it's a crazy wait, time. Wait, I mean, wait, wait, if wait, you look at, you. there's a place in the Sahara Desert that has these seven rings, just like Atlantis. Just mm -hmm. Put it out. on the poll, please, Juju. Are we finding oceans under oceans? What is Joe now? Biden doing there? Uh, also put on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show. Have we indeed rediscovered Atlantis? Because I don't think we We can't have. get there, though. We can't get there because it's a very dangerous stretch of Saharan what, Desert. What are you saying, With though? pirates like, and with other it, rebels. Anytime Tony's got this like body posture. <laughs> no, but Tony, what do you like? I'm like, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. I'm just terrifying. trying to put you guys on game. Tony, all right, so wait, wait. You're trying to put me on game that Atlantis has been rediscovered and has. has I'm putting it on the screen right now. The surprising you. thing that Lewis yeah. Yeah. had yeah. this Lewis Do you know what it. that is? Do you know what that is, Dan? The white stuff? It's salt. If we can oh. zoom out, I don't think we can here. We can make the out, world's largest salted rim margarita. Let my boy cook. This is. Hundreds of miles away from the ocean. How did that happen? Just putting that out there for you. Mm -hmm. Something to ponder. Yep. Put it in the file. Upload yeah, it. it I, hold on. Oceans <laughs> under oceans. I Dan. mean, he's got a he checkmate. <laughs> Bishop to Rook 9. He's Welcome back, Dan. Thank you. I put this on the poll as well, Juju at Levitard Show. Are infographics indeed destroying America? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I agree uh, with that take because then there will be like a three hour show the next day that's yeah. just reacting from yeah. the infographic. A question, by the way. Sometimes it's our show. Tony, you said that it's dangerous because there are pirates. Why the hell are pirates in the middle of nowhere there? Well, there's pirates in the water if you're trying to get to like where that is. This like, is the Saharan the, Desert. Right, but I'm saying on the, on the coast, there's pirates if you're trying to get in. But once you get in, there's rebel groups. Around that area. Too. I'm mm -hmm. flying. No, you can't fly. You can't come chopper, man. No, can't. No. You can't do the Sudeikis chopper for, with Pablo? Can't for, do it, no. For, forgive me, though. Just forgive me for a second. Just forgive me. In the middle of this, I still don't know what this infographic is. 
Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like what? What are you saying? People falling for what? Wait, you don't understand the concept of it? No, this one, the one you're saying, as it Stugatz? relates to Stugat. Yes, you're, you're saying you're talking about something so inside that I don't know what you're talking about, and and you're saying it as if everyone knows that an don't infographic, worry about it, Dan. an infographic reported something understand. about Stugat, and I'm learning about it for the first time. I'll tell you where you can find out all about it, Dan. You can learn everything. Just go to the slow report. They'll have it in about a week. <laughs>
strikes out and then complains they shouldn't be booing me when that's one guy they are paying and they're going to lose Jazz Chisholm and they don't know how to make money and they're just creating diabetes in the outfield with that all-you-can-eat uh, buffet. Come watch us at the lowest ticket price. Stugatz. Stugatz. Yes. You see what's happening with the A's, right? Mm-hmm. Opening day, A's was $19. 12 people there. Marlins were $13. They were the war- the business is failing in Miami. It swallowed Jeter. They made the playoffs, and then they come out of the box here with uh, a, a, a start no team has ever started this way after making the playoffs. Oh, and seven, and all seven games at home. That's amazing. They were favorite yes. in all those games. They played two bad teams in the Pirates and the. No, Angels. the Pirates aren't bad. The well, Pirates started this way last season. Well, the Pirates have played the Marlins and the Nationals, so it, you get you, you'll see how that goes as they start playing some tougher teams within their division My and Pirates. elsewhere. But they're off to a good start. The Marlins. There's a lot of baseball history, Dan, and to have the worst start of a team that made the playoffs the year before is yep. not ideal. What's crazy is they had their best opening day attendance since 2016. Mm-hmm. And then did this and kind of squandered all of it. Coming off a playoff season. But what Dan is saying, because Dan loves baseball. Dan wants the Marlins to be good, but you want Billy to be miserable more? Is that what you're saying? It's just the comedic fodder of Burger King wants to give away a Whopper for the Marlins winning a game. And they haven't been able to. And it's a whole homestand. And it was. And people don't think the Angels or the Pirates are any good. That's Trout. Don't tell me he's not good. He hit a ball further than Stanton ever hit one. It was 500 feet. Yeah, win something. Tired of him doing that. Yeah, so. A home run. He's going to hit 40 homers, get 43 RBI. Yeah. And, it, and do nothing. I know. What do you mean? Do nothing. He's, he's unbelievable. He's not boring. He and nobody boring. can ground into a double play like Garcia. They're the best in the league at having a player who can ground into a double play, though. <laughs> if you're looking for elite, they're elite at grounding they're, into but double But their plays. bullpen stinks. Burger King wants to give away a Whopper. They want to feed Miami to death. Okay, they just want to feed us here. Thirteen dollar <laughs> tickets. They fed us bullshit. They felt like this is man. This is baseball's last business brothel house. Like they came in here and just took everything and are going to leave nothing but bones. Like it's just going to be skeletal. Don't remains. watch the baseball. Just eat, they, please. They, look, Wait. Samson got tri- Samson tricked Jeter and A Rod into yeah, we'll fight over teams, and then they sold it for too much, and now the economy just rots it. Like they've got no chance coming out of the gate this way, and and the part though that overrode all of that for me is that as the Panthers head in the playoffs and Jimmy Butler's riding around the streets of Miami on a horse, Billy gets finally the start to his season after a playoff run. And in our most historic sport, seven games at home lost out of the gate, bullpen falling apart. It's like the worst way a season can start. The all-you-can-eat seats, do I get the Gator Dogs there too? Can I? I don't believe the Gator Chili Dog qualifies. You got pretzels, burgers, hot dogs, all all sort of your standard ballpark food. But a Gator Chili Dog, I'll tell you. I want that dog. I want that. I've never wanted a dog more. As bad as th- as bad as this Marlins team is, it inspired me, and I think it should inspire Marlins fans to get creative and write a song. I got in the lab, I got with Yeti, and I wrote a song about my sadness with this Marlins team. Samson, uh, <laughs> he won't have that. Uh, Rich Eisen, uh, 
I can't believe what Stugatz is just showing me here because he's just turning uh, the camera to me, and it's Samson. You guys in video need to get this. It's on an airplane, and he's saying, looking forward to sitting. In this would have been good, Stugatz, to give video instead of just well, giving read, it read to the me. Copy, read the copy. Uh, read the copy. But but Samson is is saying in uh, he's taunting us. What's he saying? He is. Well, he said he's copy. excited to fill in for Rich Eisen, and thanks for the invites. <laughs> looking forward to sitting in your chair, Rich Eisen. How many shows of this size are there in America? Five? It's Five shows this us, size? Us, Rich Eisen, Dan Patrick. Yeah. What else? Seven. Uh, but Samson's getting a big chair today, and he was invited. He needs one. He does. That's true. Mm. And, but he's going to be competing against us now while going, let's, on, while going on tour. Let's he, kick his ass. Let's kick his yeah, ass. Yeah, that's Dan, right. You, did, you weren't here for the Matt Ishbia sound, but... I don't know if we can pull that up. I'll filibuster while people search for it. But I wanted him to know we're number one. We're going to kick his effing ass. That's right. And we're going to stick it to him. And I'm number one. You're number one. Thank you're you. number one. We win. We win. We win. I love you, buddy. I think we all knew the Marlins season was going to go downhill when the bad omen of the Sandy Alcantara bobblehead arm fell off. Also, when Samson said they would be this year's Diamondbacks. Uh, I'm told that we do have that voicemail. Dan, I don't know if you've heard it. The Matt Ishbia voicemail, the owner of the Phoenix Suns. I have, uh, but that was very graceful the way you did that. Tried to toss it to video and then. I, well, I tried to filibuster and I did. You, yeah, well. I did. Here well, we go. Not, not well, though. Not well. Hey, buddy. Hope you're doing good. Just want to say I love you. We fing took those c suckers down. Fuck them. And we're going to keep fing sticking it to them forever. Forever. Fuck those guys. We're number one. We kick the shit out of them. Brokers are number one. UWM's number one. You're number one. We're all number one together, and f them. I f hate them with all my heart, and we're going to keep kicking their ass every f day. That's why I was here f 4 a.m. again today. I don't give a f We're going to keep kicking their ass, and so love you, man. We talked about it. We waited for weeks to go up. I'm going to win, and you're going to win. Both are happening right now. Keep hiring. Keep building. Keep growing. Let's f go. Dan, our producers are number one. Our video team is number one. You're number one. Sugats is number one. We're going to keep kicking their fucking asses. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I've been up since 4 a.m. <laughs> who, who are you fighting with? The Rich Eisen show Samson, now and that yeah. traitor, yeah, yeah. that traitor David Samson. And you know what? You can take his ass and stay his ass over there. Don't come back over here. <laughs> Who's his producer? I'll fight him. You fight Samson. Look at this guy. Look at this yeah. smug bastard okay, right but here. Th he, that smile on his face. Yes, yes. Please, can we do a close-up? smile. No, yeah. he, wait a minute. He's taunting us. He's taunting also us. Also looks like first class. This is disrespectful. Or no. yeah. it, look, it looks like the overhead. I've never had that wall. He's small enough. He's small enough. You could put him in the overhead. Hmm. Is this is this him signaling to America that I want all your jobs? Uh, he's going on tour. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's on tour. What Interesting that he didn't invite the Hee Haw <laughs> Three to open up. I mean, truly selfish. This is a big seat. Rich, Rich eyes. He's is he doing this show that, that solo? Seat or? You, okay, you keep making jokes, but yes, how I am. am I just learning? How am I just learning <laughs> that there's an infographic that suggests that Stugatz is going to be working at WFAN? <laughs> this I, I go away for three or four days, right. and and now Samson is betraying us. Mm -hmm. With, are we, so what are you saying that Rich Eisen is an enemy of ours? He is now. It's wor I'm worried that you don't think that way, Dan. Yeah, Every right. show is an enemy of this show because we're number one. He's competition, man. Oh, I see. We want to kick their ass over so there. See, is, now no, you get it. No, but Tony, this is your Nick Wright thing of everyone must be vanquished. Everybody must be no, vanquished, including the Rich no. Eisen show. Dan, we kind of need you behind this. No. Yeah. If I we're all into this, doesn't work you're without you. Oh. You're the showgun, Dan. I but, think they can have David Sampson. <laughs> Crimson Sky, Dan. <laughs> Rich Eisen, yeah, we had to give Rich Eisen, up. he's all yours. He's all yours. We'll take a player to be named later. The T-shirt the, 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 the store isn't worth that much. <laughs> it's the Trojan horse. Is that what we just gave him a virus? Uh, Eisen, please. <laughs> he's going to take down the Eisen, Rich Eisen please show. Please take him and go conquer worlds together. <laughs> the two of you. Wait to see. <laughs> this is a betrayal. At, at every turn, I go away for a couple of days. And why... What is happening around here? I mean, mine was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> that a lot of people kind of believed. <laughs> oh, man. Not me, though. Dan, we had a return of someone who I've missed for a very, very long time. 
I don't know if you know this. I, I, I don't know if any of you guys are aware of this. LeVar Ball is back. Oh, my God. In a big way. And you know what I, I likened it to? I said it's like, you remember when you were growing up, your mom used to make something. Maybe it was like a special kind of cookie or whatever. Whichever she cooked, the house smelled like that, right? And then you grow up and you leave home and you, you get go to college, you get a job, you get your own place, and you come back home for maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas. You get that smell. And you walk in the house and it smells like that smell and everything comes rushing back. That was me finding the LeVar Ball quotes. And I was like, oh, I've missed this so much. I've missed this so much. And it's a, they asked him, why do your sons keep getting hurt? And he says, because they're not with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they got him doing these Rudy Toot workouts. And I want to know so badly, what does Rudy Toot workout mean? You know exactly what it means. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but I want to know what it means. He also threw Puma under the bus, too. Yep. Well, well do, we have, do we have any idea? I mean, what, what's true there? Uh, I mean, his sons aren't injured because of those shoes of his. No, they? it's because of <laughs> the Rudy Toot workouts, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> I got the, the exact quote here for you, Dano. He says, quote, the reason they hurt is because they got away from me. And they start doing these Rudy Toot workouts because if you keep running, <laughs> if you keep running them hills, you're going to keep that power and that strength. A lot of things have to do with them raggedy shoes that Melo be wearing. <laughs> them shoes are not made the right way for him. There it is. That's why he keeps tweaking his ankle every single time. Dog, remember how that much more fun? That can't be real. That can't be real. It's real. I got the audio.
My larger point, Stugat, was just that I was hoping, after reading an old-fashioned article in the Miami Herald by Barry Jackson, still mm. out here doing it, yeah. asking one homestand into the season, <laughs> do they blow this whole damn thing up again? <laughs> I wanted to see Billy today because I believe there is no greater feeling in sports friendship. What's the better one? What's the best of the feelings in sports friendship than being able to make fun of your friend because he's come out of the gate in a season? He's not bold or hopeful enough to actually ever show you I care about this team. I've given right. my heart to it the way that Mike and Chris and Jeremy are going to have their hearts broken. Uh, Roy. Whoa. Roy, if those teams don't win the championship this year, as you guys are headed into two months of insanity where America's going to be laughing at you. You guys wanted that defensive style of hockey. You wanted it. You wanted it all season. Paul you, Ball. you haven't allowed any goals, the fewer goals than any, but now you're broken at the end of the season. All of your torsos again. Are you starting to question the Panthers? Is that what you're I, doing? They, they're just they're not what? finishing strong. My only point uh. is that Billy rarely dares to dream, is my point. The Marlins have knocked it out of his fandom. He's a father with two kids. He pretends not to care about anything in the world, but he genuinely cares about this team has since he's a little boy, probably still has little collectibles all over his house about this team. And for them to come out of this gate this way buries his soul and nobody, he will not let you see it. I wonder if he still has the Andrew Miller uh, giveaway t-shirt. I still see that around the ballpark sometimes for whatever reason. That was the best quality yeah. giveaway t-shirt they ever had. The black one with the silver letters. Nah, I would argue Sergio Mitre. I still have one of those. You still have the Sergio really? yeah. Mitre. That's just because the Flanagan's giveaway jersey hasn't Ooh. happened yet. Oh, I can't June wait for 1st, that. June 1st. going to be the best day of get baseball at the ballpark. Of the season. But to Dan's point, Billy loves the Marlins so much and doesn't love to travel. This is a person last year who went to Detroit to see Miguel Cabrera's 3,000th hit. I mean, I can't, he cares. I can't explain to the audience that we do not have a more concealed, true fandom around here. Like, true will live and die with a team more than Billy's, which has been shriveled to a little nub of blackened coal because this <laughs> franchise has taken boyhood Billy, I'm pretty sure, my mother has given Billy an assortment of Marlins memorabilia from, like, 1993. Billy cares about this team from a child <laughs> dares to dream about sports. And it's always Samson running the thing. And they bleed it dry, and they've just they've turned his fandom into a shriveled little thing that he doesn't want to show He also anybody. won two World Series. I mean. We are the all you can eat tickets working? Ha has attendance been better? They they're allowing instruments into the stadium now. Oh, is, after the ban. Is that working? I saw some guy ate mm. a bunch of food at the Marlins game last night. I mean, yeah, they showed they showed some clips on the on the video if you're watching on Max or on YouTube right now. I didn't that's why I was like if the Gator Dog ain't involved. I don't want them all you can eat seats. I don't I don't need regular hot, all you can eat regular hot dogs or regular burgers. Big update, I mean. Okay. The Gator Chili Dog is included in the All You Can Eat season. Guess wow. who's going to a Marlins game? <laughs> All right, let me on. pull up the schedule right now on the Game Time app. Uh, before the show, <laughs> forgive Robo me, uh, Director Jason, who rarely uh, tells us uh, that he's got something, he uh, spoke up and, uh, and he said that they had some producer somewhere did the All You Can Eat uh, diarrhea tumble of right field uh, Marlins baseball. We're going to shit chili dogs until... Uh, uh, gator chili dog stamp. No, but I, I, I mean, we're really doing this all you can eat. To, Real gator. $52. You're going to really do, you're going to put a buffet in right field. Why not? <laughs> they are 17th in attendance. Right <laughs> in the middle of the back. Their, That's uh, way better than the Wow. Uh, That's middle of the back. Wait, a lot of teams haven't played at home yet, though. Yeah. I mean, yes, that's right. So then there are someone is there playing are, at home, Chris. There are only 19 teams that have played at home, yeah, which so doesn't really make sense. 17 out of 19. <laughs> that's all right. Middle of the pack. Middle of the pack. Okay, here we go. All right. 
So that, this guy started with a hot dog and a burger. That's mm-hmm. a, that's mm-hmm. as one would. And then right. he went to a nachos. Nub, wow, another hot dog. That's two chili dogs, then nachos. And a Pepsi. And There's got to be a bathroom stop in I here mean, somewhere. Everyone's got a little popcorn. Stop. How do you no, go popcorn you that late? You got to go popcorn early. Mac there. and cheese. That's an appetizer, sandwich. right? No. It's a ballpark appetizer. There, you can only eat mm. so much. Peanuts. peanuts and cookies? He's finishing with peanuts? This, guy's, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. The Marlin serving Pepsi instead of Coke has to be the biggest betrayal for Billy, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, yeah, he's a coke fiend. This is a weird huh? area of the country because the Heat also are a Pepsi product uh, place, and I believe Hard Rock Stadium, if I'm not mistaken, is also Pepsi product. And so, as a staunch advocate for all Coca-Cola products, I am always kind of flummoxed when I go to events here, whether it's a Marlins game or a Heat game, and I got to drink Aquafina water and Starry, and I'm like, ugh, it's all, all these off-brand things. Well, Aquafina is better than Dasani, no, and that's not. what you get for Coke. It's not? It's not. You're insane. You don't like a little tss your when you open take. your water? Nope. We've argued about a lot. Nah. They're all equal. All waters are created equal. We love uh, all that's waters. Right. <laughs> well, no, how, they're all equal. How did you tell them apart? Well, I have a superior test. taste palate. You drink that smart water, though, you're like, ah, oh, I can feel it working. Can we get back to LeVar Ball for a second? You feel smarter. I have also missed him and Chris Cody I would like for you to just give us the audience uh, I will I will recall so very nostalgically fondly uh, we tried to get the big baller brand sneakers very early buyers uh, it, they arrived nine months late, I think. You and, got yours, and were a different brand, <laughs> and 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 weren't or they just weren't what I, what I bought, and so and and I thought this man was going to revolutionize the business. Like I was really hoping that yeah, well, why not? Why not? He's got two great NBA first round picks. If he thinks he can get into the sneaker business, why wouldn't I want to support the? We anarchist? bought in. Yeah. And 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 then one of the reasons we bought in is because uh, do we have that sound of Chris Cuomo uh, talking to Lavar Ball? Because I wanted to oh. watch these interviews before Lavar <laughs> Ball got canceled by First Take and everybody else. I wanted to watch these interviews for the last. You know he got some shoes, and I tell you what, behind closed doors, I think he got him on his feet just dancing. Are they? You know what song he's singing? What song? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is not a real song. That's what song he's singing. That is not a song. They just made one. You made that up, and it is not a real song. Hey, he got a new song. It's it's just for him. Hard fall for both those guys. The world (laughs) was a better place when LeVar Ball was on our TV screens. Hmm. Basketball was a happier place when LeVar Ball was on our TV screens. Just loud dad comes to the NBA. Oh, forget about all these people <laughs> arguing societal issues and stuff. I just need someone to come delusionally tell me no, that so their great. son is better than it, Steph Curry. It, no, it, no, and that he can beat Michael Jordan. That he can that beat he Michael Jordan one on one. No, but can we just for just a moment, please? Because unfortunately, man, weren't weren't his kids playing in high school and like Lithuania and had a huge influencer following as they came up through. Like well, the, the, a the, couple of them did. Like L- Lamelo played in Lithuania, and so did uh, Leangelo. The man was trying to revolutionize the business with two prodigy children that he did get to the wow. NBA. And if he had, cur- if he could have turned them, poor Jello, into marketing <laughs> machines and succeeded at. He's at, the Coop Manning. Yeah, he said. He said he has two prodigy children and Jello. Okay, no. So he had so he had three prospects, and two of them panned gold. Yeah. And, and then he became a famous dad who was loudly um, in charge of his kid's life. And I really loved that shaking the paradigm of sports power. Dude, it was so fun. It was. I remember he came on Sports Nation. He dunked on Marcellus Wiley and he did a little dance. Like, it was so fun. And people, I'm, and I blame the sports media industrial complex. They got all upset, like, oh, who is this guy? How dare he say that he could beat Michael Jordan? I'm like, don't you guys understand what he's doing? He's doing a bit here. Why are you guys taking him seriously? He's your drunk uncle at, at the barbecue. You just laugh and let him say what he's got to say. But no, we have to get we have to get Lavar up out of here. And what did well, we replace well, him with? Wait a minute, can Anger. I? I forgive me because I don't want to have a blind spot about this. When you said we had to get Lavar up out of here, I don't remember what he was doing, but I think I remember something on. Uh, was was it on Cowherd? Like, there's a reason Lavar Ball stopped appearing on television. Well, he, like, flew, he flew too close to the sun. I think there's a couple. Like this, there's this is what it was. But I don't remember the details. So you're just I, flippantly I throwing this out here. I remember details. Details were 
uh, for one, he said something along the lines of like, uh, you know, he was very hard on his kids and whatever. But if they wanted to be, they could do whatever they wanted, but they want to be basketball players, so I would be there for them. If they wanted to be librarians, and I would let my wife do it or something. Like he made some sort of kind of illusion that I, I remember sexism, but I don't remember the exact. Context. Neither do I. And he, I think that's what you're referring. He said to. something to Molly Karam as well that was pretty inappropriate on the air. What did he say? It was something like dismissing her in the conversation or something. I mean, the details I, I matter, though. When you say I maybe know, maybe we should look I, it up. When I, mean. when, when you say I know the details, and then you're like, wait, what? I, maybe, well, I may, no, no, I'm, I gave may, you some details. Yep, yeah, yeah, some details. Yeah. But there was a reason that from look, you were enjoying this. We were all enjoying the content machine that was Lavar Ball God, saying crazy shit, and then it got serious. He, also, flew, he but, flew too close to the sun. No, but the. The part that was close to the sun. I'm good with it. <laughs> another part. Yes, of course, we'd be good with it. Yes. He's your drunk uncle at the barbecue. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, he says inappropriate yeah, things. Say, sexist things that can't be done and said or just, tolerated just anymore. Just like your drunk uncle at the barbecue. That's no. my point. No, but I need, you need to know what the details are before you give the, the show the carte details, blanche. I don't think we should repeat on air. Yeah, now see, that I'm reading God it. God damn it. I mean, go sit in the penalty box. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I mean, I knew it. You didn't know the details. I do know the details. Two minutes for flying too Jeez. close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. He said, uh, no, well, what does that mean? Read your... <laughs> Get out of here <laughs> now. <laughs> it's irresponsible. Like, I... like if, you, Ball? if you go back and listen, when Amin asked me what the details no, no, were, no, I just no, went, no, just come on. we can find that sound <laughs> and isolate it because I just didn't want to say it. I mean, how could you that confidently go into the breach? He knew some of the details, Odan, of the things that he knew. He knew the details. Too. Well, I, well, I, the question I was asking is, why was he canceled? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, those details, I don't know. Too close to the don't sun, Dan. <laughs> he covered it in too close to the I, sun, I, though. I can give you before that. It was a great deal of fun. Yeah, the media was dancing. Yeah, woo. And then, and then we learned some uncomfortable details, and then he disappeared. It's not like we wouldn't have kept the content machine flowing if something really questionable hadn't happened. His kids ended up being not that good, so. You guys want to hear sound of LeVar saying Lonzo is better than Steph? I trained my son. I know what he's about. You guys know what Steph is about from what you've seen. I don't know what Steph is about. He's a good player. But he's a two-time MVP. He can be a ten-time MVP. I still don't think he's better than my son. <laughs> Yeah, it's a blowhard fool wandering the sidelines. Court Chester, who wouldn't want that? Just can you play nice with others? Yes, no. He's back, though. No is the answer. No, no. You got, we got to get Jeff out of here. But what a glorious mess it would have been, right? If his sons had been any good. Poor Alonzo.